Hello everyone. So today we are going to talk about position-based dynamics. Uh, it's uh, very useful to add collision between particles in Niagara. So to start, I want to use uh, this system. You can find it into the content example in the Niagara Advanced level. So I just do a simple migrate. So now we are on a fresh uh, project. I just add this into a basic level. Uh, um, my first purpose is to switch the pole mesh by this coffee bean mesh. So to do that, I just open my Niagara system. I go to my mesh renderer and I add this mesh. So what's happened here? The mesh is very huge, um, but if I go in my initial particle, I can't change the size with a regular method. It's because the size is driven by mass. If I change this, okay. I reduce the size, but the problem is I reduce the size of the collision too. So to have a good collision size, I need to change my scale in the mesh renderer like this. So now I have a correct collision. I just gonna switch my material is a very simple material. I just add a particle color to control my color with the Niagara system here. Okay. So now the main problem you can meet is if you want to add a lot more particles, like let's say this. So as you can see, we have a collision problem on the edge of the system. Just gonna add some shadow. Okay. So why? It's because we use a neighbor grid to 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 control how the physics is driven into the system. So you can display this neighbor grid here. And as you can see, when we go out of this box, we have we lost collision. There is no collision. So the first logic method is just to scale the box. Okay, by default, you have a, a max neighbor, I, I think it's 15, but I'm not sure. So as you can see, this is the number of particles who can interact into each cell of the grid. So here, we have more, I think by default is six. Uh, so we have clearly more than six particles per cell. So if I just change this value, if I increase it, so now we have something very more calm. So now let's say I want to add uh, some gravity on my mesh. Uh, for the moment, we have a spawn burst. We're going to switch it for a spawn rate. Let's say for 20 particles. Okay. So let's say I want to add gravity. I remove this point force, I add gravity. So here yeah, I, I have a problem. This is the speed of my mesh. The gravity is regular, but the mesh is very slow. It's because in the solve force and velocity, they add a speed limit. And regular uh, Niagara particle system, you, there is no limit, but in our case, this can be a problem because 
particle goes everywhere. So a good fix for the speed limit. If I put a curve here, I can start by add a very hard limitation and oh, excuse me, not the gravity and add more speed after the beginning of his life. So let's start at the beginning. So when they bur burst, uh, when my particle burn, burn um, they don't go everywhere because I limit their speed. And after I let them fall at regular speed. I can spawn more particles here. Okay. So now let's enhance uh, the visual of, of our scene. So we have, uh, I download some, uh, just two mesh to, uh, from Megascan. So I just have uh, simple planks. I'm gonna use it uh, to make a fake table. So one here like this. Uh, okay, and let's use this one again. Okay, I'm gonna remove this. I need to clean. I love this. Uh, maybe I want to keep this the exponential fog because I like to use volumetric fog. I don't want the sky. I probably don't need the skylight for this example. Not volumetric cloud. And let's remove this light. So now we are in a dark. Let's use spotlight. I just want to do a simple three-point uh, light settings. Okay, one like this. I like to invert the scale off to control the distance of my light. Just one like this. Let's add two other lights. Say so one here and one here. Okay, they are very strong. I'm gonna reduce just this one. I like to put a bit of color in it. I don't know how you say in English, but uh, in coffee, you have in your cup, you have uh, the coffee and the cream. So is why I just want to add a bit of yellow in my light to to have an evocation of this color. It's the same for the wood. I choose the yellow wood. Okay. I think I put my grid out of the table. Let's see that. If I display my grid. Yeah, it's not at the table. So what I want to do is I put the edge of my grid on the table, maybe after and I'm gonna take my emitter and put him more uh, more on the top. So to do that, I just go in my initial particle and I tell him, "Hey, you start uh, or up." Yeah, thing like this. Okay.
Maybe I can add more drag at the end. Not much. Okay. Mm, that's too much. Maybe I can just play with my collision and I'll reduce <coughs> the restitution. Okay. Yeah, I like this. Okay. So we have a better visual now. So now let's talk about collision. Um, if you want to start to play with it, uh, let's say I have this cup, or I don't know, you can say in English for this type of thing. Um, one of the problems I have here is my particle go directly through my mesh. So this is because uh, we are in GPU and we use our particle use GPU and for collision we use distance fields. Uh, so you need to have a good resolution on the distance field of your mesh. So to avoid my collision go through the mesh, I go to my cup mesh, I go to my distance field resolution and I gonna upscale it. I apply, apply my change, save it. And why this is not work, what's happened? Okay, so apparently sometimes <laughs> you need just to re replace your mesh. Okay, so now the collision are correct. I don't have a problem like previously. So more you add particle, more your, perform your performance are going down. Uh, so, a good way to have a better performance in cinematics is you can just create, let's say, a sequencer. Let's call it Coffee Toot Master. So, in this one, I add my particle and what I want to do is bake this animation. To do that you need to enable uh, the chaos cache. The chaos caching uh, you need to enable this plugin. So after you do that you have to use your particle, call a system a life cycle. Uh, if I go out my timeline now, there is no particle because the life cycle is not start. But if I go and start, now it's okay. I want a desired age. So now the particle is a uh, it just follows the life cycle. It's not uh, random on every time you, you play it. And you need it to use a cache. And after that you can add Niagara cache and bake the animation. So now we have a very better performance. We can go forward and reward the sequence. Um, yeah.
that's it. One last thing I want to show you is for the light, uh, I use Lumen. As you see, the shadows are very sharp and I don't like this. So, okay, it's mainly because of this light. So, what you can do is just play with the source radius to have something more smooth. And I like to play with it for other lights. Okay. And yeah, the rendering is very more smooth. So yeah, that's it. So I hope this video can help you. Uh, you can find the final file with some gallery example on my Patreon. Uh, there is a sequencer and everything. Uh, I play a lot with uh, the slow motion. So yeah. So thank you for watching the video and have a nice day. Bye-bye.